Hey YouTube, back with another video. And today I wanted to talk about getting out of auto mode on your cameras. So this week I saw this tweet and I found it kind of interesting. Um, now, if you shoot an auto, it doesn't mean you're not a photographer. Photography is a lot of things. It's composition, it's ideation, it's editing, it's your individual style. And if part of that is you shooting an auto, more power to you. What I want to talk to you about is how to advance your creativity by using the different modes that your camera has and how you can take control of that final image and the look that you're trying to get by using those different modes. So the first thing I think you need to understand is how the exposure works. And inside of your camera, every camera has a metering system. If you look through your viewfinder, that's that little it's the lines that usually has a negative and a positive on one side and a zero in the middle. Now that's the tool that's gonna help you be able to get that proper exposure. And now there's three things that add up to get that exposure. And that would be your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. So let's start with shutter speed. So shutter speed is the amount of time your shutter is open to let light in. So the bigger the number, so one over four thousandths is a really quick shutter speed, whereas a 30 second is a very, very slow shutter speed. That's gonna take 30 seconds for all of that light to come in. So think of light painting or astrophotography, things like that. That's where you're gonna use those really slow shutter speeds. Whereas if you're taking pictures of your kids or sports photography or something like that, that's where you're gonna want those really fast shutter speeds. So the next, the next part is the aperture. So that's the actual mechanism on the lens that lets light in. So if you look inside of your lens, you will see, if you look inside of your lens, you'll see this little thing right there, which, will either look really big or really small. So if it looks really big, it's gonna be a very low aperture, like 1.4, 1.8, 2.8, something like that. If it's really small and closed down, you probably have it set at like F8, F14, F22, things like that. Now, the difference with this is lower apertures like F1.4 will let in a lot of light. And the advantage of that is exactly what I said, low light shooting. So think of wedding photographers inside a church or shooting photography at night or low light or um, shooting portraits at dusk, things like that. The other stylistic side that you get from it is a low aperture is gonna give you a really shallow depth of field. So if you like bokeh and things like that and the background being blurry, that's, what you're looking for with that. But on the other side, if you want everything in focus from front to back, you're gonna want a higher aperture. So an F8 and above. The last piece of the exposure puzzle is ISO. And ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light. So most cameras go from like 100 to let's say like 6,400 before you get into those expandable numbers. And basically what that means is as you go up the numbers, the more sensitive your camera will be to light. So if, you, if you're outside in a bright and sunny day, you're gonna be down at probably ISO 100. If you're shooting more at twilight or dusk, things like that, you're gonna have to sh bring up that ISO quite a bit. So you might be at 600, 800, 1000, 1200, somewhere in there. And then it goes up from there. So if you're inside your house, at night trying to take pictures, you're probably gonna be even higher than that. So maybe 3,200. Now, the problem with this is the higher you go in those numbers, the more grain you're gonna introduce into your image. So you can see with everything, there's give and takes. So with shutter speed, there's a give and take. So a really fast shutter speed is going to not let in a lot of light, but it's gonna freeze that action instantaneously. A really slow shutter speed is going to let in a lot of light, but it's gonna be very susceptible to motion blur or 
blur of anything moving your camera or anything like that, it's gonna show in those images. Same thing with aperture. So low aperture is going to let in a lot of light, but it's gonna have a very shallow depth of field. There's not gonna be a lot of focus range. If you're taking pictures of multiple subjects, the one in the front's gonna be in focus and the one in the back's gonna be out of focus. Same thing with ISO. So low ISO, not a lot of light, not, but also a clearer, less grainy image. Whereas you go up a more, it'll allow more light, but it's gonna be a potentially a more grainy image. So now that we have a basic understanding of your camera's exposure and the different things that go into making that exposure, let's talk about the different modes that your camera has to help facilitate getting out of auto. And for now, we're gonna kind of skip over uh, full manual and we're gonna jump into a couple of the other modes that I think are probably a little bit easier to grasp for beginners. So let's jump straight into aperture priority. So on, e on your DSLR or your mirrorless camera, you're gonna have a aperture priority uh, mode and it's usually marked out with an A or I think Canon has AV. And what that mode does, if you switch to that, you can change the aperture and the camera will adjust the shutter speed to compensate. So let's say you were taking some portraits and you want a really shallow depth of field. You really wanna focus in on that subject. You can crank your camera all the way down. So the lowest that this camera has is F 2.8. So right now where I'm taking this, this shot, the camera is saying at F 2.8, and ISO 160, I need one eighth of a second to take that photo. So it's kind of dark in here. So in order to get that, I'm not gonna be able to hand hold this shot for one eighth of a second. Generally, they say if you, you should at least have as much as your focal length. So I would be looking at one, one or one twenty fourth of a second at minimum to be able to handhold this. If I zoom this lens out to 70, because it's a longer focal length, I would need at least 1 70th of a second to be able to get a clear shot. Again, these are kind of general rules. If you're, if you're rock steady hands, maybe you can go a little bit lower. If you have jittery hands, you're probably gonna have to go a little bit higher, so you'll have to play that as you will. But um, so how would I be able to take this photo in this environment and be able to get that 2.8 aperture that I want and still get a shutter speed? Well, then comes in your second variable, your ISO. So if I select my ISO and I say, okay, let me put that from 160, which it was, let me go up to 500 and see where that is. So now it's saying at F2.8 at ISO 500, I'm at 1 25th of a second. So if I go back to and zoom out to 24, I'm probably okay there. If I wanna get out to that 70 though, I'm gonna have to go back into ISO and I should probably crank that up a little bit more. So let me try to go to 1600. And so there I am, I'm at one 1 60th of a second or 1 60th of a second. So I can probably take that shot and know that I'm gonna be okay. And like I said, where I'm shooting this, it's pretty dark. So you may not have that, but that's, that's an example of how you would use aperture priority. You would select the aperture that you want based on the creative style that you're looking for, whether you want a really wide depth of field or if you want a very shallow depth of field. And then you would take your ISO and you would adjust your ISO to compensate for the shutter to make sure that you were gonna get a stable shot. Now, if you attribute this to product photography or automotive photography and you're using a tripod and your subject's not gonna move, then, I mean, you're fine. Crank the ISO all the way down as low as you can go so you don't get any of that grain and use use the shutter button or use a self timer if you're worried about introducing some shake and take that photo. So that's kind of the first, the first step. So aperture priority, 
And honestly, I use Aperture Priority quite a bit. Um, if I'm doing family portrait shoots or things like that, and I don't wanna really have to worry about shutter speed, and the camera's giving me kind of what I need, and it's kind of even lighting, and there's nothing weird going on, I'll use Aperture Priority a lot. And it just, it makes it a lot easier because you're just really worried about that one thing. If you have a single subject, you wanna keep your aperture really low because I like that look. I like the uh, out of focus background. But if you, have if you have multiple subjects, you can easily change it and go up to 5.6, f8, something like that and keep multiple people in focus. So I find that aperture priority is very, very helpful. So that brings us into the second option that you have for shooting, which would be shutter priority. So if one was aperture priority, it makes sense that the other is gonna be shutter priority. So shutter priority, similar to aperture priority, lets you set your shutter speed that you're looking for. So some examples of when you would use this. Um, think about like, if you ever see those really cool firework shots where you actually see the fireworks go up and come down and it's all kind of in one frame that's a slower shutter speed, so you could dial in what you wanted. So let's say like 1 15th of a second or one second or two seconds. While that firework is going up, it explodes and starts coming back down. So the two seconds would let you kind of get that. And then it would take care of everything else. It would take care of the aperture and it would compensate for that. Another thing that I use this a lot for is uh, rolling automotive shots or rig shots. So you need a slower shutter speed to be able to show that movement of the car going. So if you tried to take that at like one five hundredth of a second, the car would look like it's standing still. But if you took it at, you know, let's say you were doing rollers with another car and you took it at one twentieth of a second, that's gonna allow you to still be able to handhold and still allow you to show that motion in the asphalt and the wheels and things like that. And again, the camera would go in and it adjusts the aperture based on how bright or dark it is. Another option, if you ever see waterfalls or the streams that look very, very smooth, same thing, it's allowing that shutter to stay open longer to be able to show that motion. Now on the flip side, if you're a sports photographer and let's say you're taking photos of high school football, that action moves very, very quickly. And if you don't have a very high shutter speed, you're gonna get, you're gonna get that motion blur, but where in the other examples that was good, it's not good there. You wanna be able to freeze that action and show those players as sharp as possible. The other thing that you have the problem with is, let's say you're taking pictures of kids, and a lot of new parents kind of understand this really quickly, is they try to take pictures inside and everything turns out blurry. And that's because that shutter speed is too slow. So shutter speed lets you adjust the shutter speed. So based on whatever you're looking for. So I hope you learned something from this video. I hope that this made getting out of auto mode a little bit easier and it helped make a little bit more sense. Um, I think in the beginning, as a beginning photographer who's just venturing outside of auto, really focus on those two modes. Focus on aperture priority and focus on shutter priority. Worry about those for a while. Practice, get used to what your camera's doing and how you're controlling the end product and then kind of venture into manual mode when you see that things aren't turning out exactly how you want and you want more light in certain areas or you want less light in certain areas. That's where manual is gonna be really powerful for you. So hopefully you learned something, hopefully you like this video. If you do, make sure you hit that like button and if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So until next time, take care.